Yeah, what's up guys? Arteta has had three meetings now. So he had the original meeting with Raul Sally. He had the meeting with Vinay and Hus Fami, contract negotiations. So that was really him just ironing out all the problems that he had when he originally went for the job when Unai, just before Unai Emery got it. But I think what we've got now, the final interview, which was last night with Josh Kroenke has been sorted out. So here we are, guys where Mikel Arteta is on the brink of signing. From what I know, it's a three-and-a-half-year deal, so he could come to take over in charge of the Everton game this weekend. His terms have been agreed, and I can actually see Man City going for Pochettino. I really can. I talked about... Uh, this was in a forum when I talked about my top 10 potential managers for Arsenal. Pep Guardiola was one of them because I believe he has an option on on his 2020-2021 contract on the last year. That is actually an option. It's not set in stone. So Guardiola can walk out of the job next summer if he wants to. And to be honest with you, I think that he's given it this year to win the Champions League. For him, it's Champions League or bust. And if they don't win the Champions League City then I would expect Guardiola to probably leave. If not, he'll probably bring in somebody um, like Pochettino uh, to replace him, or he'll replace Arteta with someone like Xavi Alonso, which is strange because I'm expecting Arteta to bring in Xavi Alonso as his number two. And if he doesn't, it could be someone like Thierry Henry or something like that. But uh, I think it's a deal that had to be done. Guys, as much as we love Freddie Lundberg, it just wasn't, you know, the team was literally sleepwalking into games and it was hit and hope uh, for Freddie. You could see how elated he was when we beat West Ham and it was just like he was dying to get over the line with some kind of semblance of a positive outcome. So therefore expectations with Freddie have always been low and He's not that experienced, although he has had experience, as I said, Wolfberg, Seattle, he has had experience. But this is just something which has been thrown into his lap. He's had no time to prep. Um, and really, is it something that he wants to do? Maybe, but not now. You know, at least he would have liked to get his feet wet in the mix of things. And I think with Arteta, you've got somebody who not only is experienced in managing players and coaching players, because that's what he's been doing for the last few years at Manchester City. Um, I did state, again, that Pep Guardiola is the manager, but he's more of an overseer in regards to everything Manchester City. The person who does the coaching and training on the field is Mikel Arteta, and that's a well-known commodity. And again, you have to check Amazon Prime for that because you can see how the players highly regard him and respect him in that role so i think i've been watching some old videos this morning i've put a few of them on uh, 101 and a couple i've put on the twitter page where arteta has voiced his opinions about his long-term goals and not only that is he has made clear that arsenal's board has told him that there will be opportunities for you down the road he specifically came out and said that and I actually stamp timed the t the um, the video that I sent on Twitter and on 101, where Arteta says he's had conversations with the front office and they would love to have him back in another capacity. Make it that what you will. He also explained that Arsenal, for him, was the best club in 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 Britain in the in the UK. Arsenal was the best club in Britain, and that was. The, the man had spent years coming through with Everton and captaining them. And for him to actually say that about Arsenal speaks volumes. He loves this club, you know, and I forgot how tearful he was when he was given his final interview. He was really touching watching that and seeing how much he cared about the club. Overall, guys, is this something that can work? Look, we don't know what can work and what doesn't work. I explained again, Unai Emery had won 10 trophies in the last five years. He was the most decorated manager in Europe before he came to Arsenal. And look what happened there. But at the same time, this is more about values and professionalism and, and ideals. That That's what it is. And it always has been for Arsenal's board. It's not the big names. They let go Angelotti. They let go going after Mourinho. They let go 
a lot of opportunities and have gone for someone who meets their core values. And that's important. Arsene Wenger came out this morning and again, he gave Arteta the thumbs up because he knows the player. He knows that Arteta, when he was here, challenged him. This was a guy, the only guy that was challenging Arsene Wenger was Pat Rice and David Dean. That's it. He had he had been challenged by two people in his whole 20 years of Arsenal. And even when David Dean had left, David Dean was still having those conversations with, with Arsene Wenger. And there was plenty of times where Arteta had challenged Arsene Wenger. And this wasn't only in the locker room, but this was on the training ground as well. Arteta, if he could do that, then he can bridge this gap. He can steer the ship. And that's all we want. Guys, all we want is consistency now. That's all we want. And Arteta can bring that. Whether the players will react to it or not is a different thing. And if they don't, they're out. And, and that's all I can say to it. Listen, I, I've said many times, these are the players that have let down Wenger. These are the players that have let down Emery. And they're letting down Freddie. These players don't want to work. They, they don't want, they, there's no effort there. And you can see that Arteta is a man that demands 110%. We know that. He demanded it when he was at Arsenal, the captain, and he demanded it from the Manchester City players, and they've said so themselves. And he won't take nothing less from this crop of Arsenal players. And I'm not worried about the young kids because the kids are, are running their hearts out. It's the veterans. It's the veterans that are letting this team down time and time again. And it's those guys who are going to need replacing. And we just have to shuffle through this three and a half years until we can make that happen. Now, will a lot of it, will a lot of it be done in January? I expect in January they'll start to get rid of some players who just aren't a fit for the club. And Arteta should be a big part of that. Remember I talked about his conversation with Vinay was about 18 months ago, I had that meeting with Arsenal where I wanted more power. I wanted more of a saying with the structure, yeah? And that wasn't the way how Arsenal wanted to move forward. Now Arsenal have come back to the table and you don't come back to the table by saying to a man, look, what you was asking for 18 months ago, we still can't do that. You're not going to come back with that because if you are, man ain't going to take the job. So you would have come back with some kind of progression and some kind of leeway in, in, in what you were, didn't want to give Arteta first time around. So I expect Arteta to be a part of the transfers and the salaries and things like that. Not in charge of it, like Arsene Wenger kind of was with, with Dick Law, but just to be a part of the process so that he's, he's overseeing everything. Yeah, Remember, listen, he's come from a winning programme. He never won nothing at Everton. He came into an Arsenal team that had not won anything for a decade. We started winning trophies again. When he went to Man City to join Guardiola, that team was dominant. Yeah, Arteta has been a part of a winning programme. He brings success. And let's just hope that he will be able to do that at Arsenal. Again, don't over-promise and under-deliver. Yeah? As a fan... Set your parameters right. Because Arsenal fans have never done that. Arsenal fans have always been, we should be in the top 10. We should win the title. We should win. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> what, what we should be doing is competing. That's all you can ask for. As a fan, that's all you can ask for is to compete. Because once you're on a level where you can compete, then you can start to take it up a notch. They seem to forget that there's a level of foundation that needs to be set in a club first before you can talk about uh, sack the manager, he ain't doing his job, sack, get rid of the players they're rubbish And what you should be talking about is the structure of the club and is it right and who's pulling their weight and who's not and what needs to be done by the manager in that respect in order for us to go forward. Positive thinking guys, constructive criticism that's what we need to hear on YouTube from all Arsenal fans. In the next 24 hours, this thing should be off the ground now. He's, he's, he's basically seen all the people he needed to see. He's done the first meeting with Raul, 
the second meeting with Vinay and Haas sorting out his contract, which we know is five million a year now, and he's it's been signed off by Josh Cronkier. So, really, all that needs to happen now is for him to be announced. And I know there's some activity from the Arsenal training ground today. I popped over at London Coney earlier on today, but it should be a done deal now. And uh, really, I just want this thing to see itself through, and I want the players to give the manager a reaction against Everton because again he'll Arteta hopefully will probably only have one or two days with the team uh, Friday will probably be an introductory day and then Friday will just be a light training session and probably a video uh, walkthrough with the Everton game and then obviously early training on Saturday and then the games on Sunday so he won't be able to get much done but I think what he'll be able to outline as far as Arteta goes is seeing that commitment and desire if he doesn't see that he's going to be absolutely spitting blood on Monday morning and I think those players they know what they're in for one thing I do want to bring up though is I didn't like Aubameyang's brother coming out on social media saying that Arteta is the wrong choice and he's another Lundberg I mean how much does this guy know about how much does this guy know about football? How much does he know about actual management? If he followed what Arteta was doing, he'd realise that Arteta is a lot more fluent uh, and efficient in his training and his methods than Lundberg is. Lundberg is a man who's only really dealt with the under twenty ones, and he hasn't really had the reins on a team before. And, and for all intended purposes, I'd like Freddie to stick around, but possibly at the under-21 level and then brought up into the first team. And the same goes with Pierre Matasaka. I'd like these guys to take some kind of a coaching role in the team. But at the same time, Arteta's got to call his own men into the fray. And I'm hoping Xavier Alonso would be a part of that because Alonso's also talked about admirations of being a manager and uh, being a head coach as well. It really should have been done in the international break. So that's really on you. Again, lessons to be learned with a new front office. But um, over to you guys. Uh, listen, like and subscribe. Brilliant. Thanks for the support. And uh, I just want us to come out on against Everton and show and prove and then see where we can take this thing. It, it, implementing tactics and, and different formations and the team sheets and everything all works wonders. But if the players don't give a shit, then it's worth nothing. And this is all going to fall down to the players. That, 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 that's it. And I do not buy that these players aren't good enough. I'm not buying it. I've pulled up the Liverpool game at the Emirates. I've pulled up the win against Spurs at the Emirates. Where this was a completely different team that ran their socks off. Ran and blood and sweat for this team. And they're not doing it anymore. They haven't done it in a while. They haven't done it since Valencia at the end of last season, where they were stunning. Those wins against Napoli and Vi Look what Napoli and Valencia are doing in the Champions League now. Look look what they're doing. I know a lot of the things have fooled through with those teams, and those teams are going through changes as well. But some of the performances that they put through, especially against English teams, Arsenal just walked them last season. And it wasn't just last season. We're talking about April, May. We're not even talking about a long time ago. So don't fool yourself in thinking this team ain't good enough. This team is good enough. It's just going to take someone who can bring that extra level out of them in order to get them to perform. Yeah? If you're a man like Zaka and Mustafi and Socrates, what's your prospects after leaving Arsenal? Seriously. What's your pro You think you're going to walk into Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid? You think those teams are going to want you? Bro, listen. The reason why guys are out there giving it all, like Klasnach, um, Torreira, you know, there's a few guys that have been playing at a high level, even when the rest of the players around them aren't, is because they wear their heart on their sleeves. These are good players, and teams are going to want to be invested in those players, even if we don't want them. Yeah, the likes of the bigger teams are still going to be coming in with big money deals for the likes of Torreira, because my man is just a tiger. He's just a he's a bulldog, and he switches it on every time he's on the field. 
So that's what I would expect from all 11 players. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it right there, man. Like and subscribe. Appreciate the love. Right back at you. And let's hope that Arteta will be revealed in the next 24 hours. Speak to you soon, man. Peace out.